What's up YouTube, it's James Hugh Quick from Learn, Build, Teach, and today I wanna to give you guys a quick tutorial on JavaScript arrays. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna use the, uh, the console inside of the browser to be able to test out some JavaScript. So I can do uh, just basically any JavaScript in here, just a hello world to print that out, just to see what that looks like. Uh, so pretty straightforward. Uh, you guys have access to this in uh, Chrome, for example, in your developer tools. So you could right click and do an inspect and then select the console tab to get to this. So let's get started with uh, what an array actually is. An array is uh, a data type, a thing that you can use to store lists of items in JavaScript and in other languages as well. So in, uh, in JavaScript, it, it can actually be any type of data, which we'll see in a second. So let's start with uh, creating an array and we'll just start with uh, creating an array called ARR or R, uh, short for array. And the way we do that is we give the open and close brackets uh, by default here with nothing in it. That will create our array and I can log this out to the console so we can see it just shows this is an empty array. Now with our array created, we can do array or R dot push and we can push on the number five. What that's gonna do is add a value to that array, add the value five to the array. So now if I log array, you can see it's array of five, or it's an array with five inside of it. I can also do the same thing and push in another number, for example, and, oh, not array, but ARR, and do r.push and do log this out to the console again, and you'll see this is an order of five and eight. So uh, when you put things into an array with push, it's gonna put them in, it's gonna keep them in the order that you put them in, which is pretty cool. Now, instead of uh, cre pushing things onto the array, you could also just create an array and put things in it uh, automatically when you actually create it. So instead of creating an empty array, you can go ahead and put stuff in it. And if I log this out, array two, you can see those are the items one, two, three, four, five that are inside of that array. Now, uh, each, of, each of these elements are at a specific index in the array, and those indices start at zero. So it's zero-based indexing. So this one here is actually at the index of zero, two is at the index of one, three is at the index of two. So if I wanted to see what is uh, the value in the first index, the first element in the array, I would do array of two, and then give it the index of zero, and go ahead and print that out, and you get one. And if I were to get the uh, value at the first index, that would be two. And maybe in a, a way for this to be a little less confusing is if we went ahead and created an array that matched up with those indices. So in this case, array three at index zero would be zero and one would be one and so on and so on. So items in your array are in order of when you inserted them and they have indices uh, associated with each item. So we've seen how to add uh, an element to the array at the end of the array. There's also the ability to uh, add an element to the beginning of the array, and you can do that with unshift. So array.unshift5, now our array should be five, and then, oh actually, I should do that with array three. Array three dot unshift of five. And if we console log, actually I think I could just print this out without doing a log. If I print this out like that, see that the five got put in front and I could do the same thing again to put uh, negative 10 in here and then look at that again. And now you see negative 10, five, zero, one, two, three, four. So it's important to understand that with JavaScript arrays, now the indices have updated for all of these elements since we put something at the beginning. So now array three of zero is gonna be that negative 10. The index one will be five and then two will be zero, three will be one and so on and so on. So those indexes uh, will always correspond to the order of the items that are in your array. One of the things you can also do with, uh, with arrays is call the sort function. And so for basic arrays, this will figure out how to sort those things uh, by itself. So in this case, we've just got an array of numbers, which is relatively easy for the language to understand how to sort. So if you're working with numbers in your array, you can call array.sort uh, and it will obviously sort those for you. Now let's look at uh, some a names array of strings. So in this case, I can have James, my wife Jess, dog Lily, and Padfoot. Harry Potter references for all you Harry Potter fans out there. So here's an array of names. 
I can print them out and you can see it looks has the same format as it did before, but now it's got uh, strings in, inside of here instead of numbers. Same principles apply. You can do names dot uh, push and I can push on Dumbledore if I wanted to and print that out again. Now you see Dumbledore on the end. You could also do uh, names dot unshift just like you did before. And we could do Lupin uh, for unshift and now print this out again. And now you see Lupin, James, Jess, Lily, Sevy, Padfoot and Dumbledore. You can also, uh, since strings are relatively easy to sort, you can call the sort function on that. And now you'll see those names are in order, which is pretty cool. And you can still go out and get a reference to specific items in the array by telling it which index you want to get access to. All right, so I just cleared my console just to clean things up a little bit. We've still got our names array and with all these names inside of them. So one of the common things that we'll have to do in JavaScript or with arrays, just in general, really regardless of the language, is iterate through each element in the array and do something with it. So one of the uh, earliest ways to do this is to create a for loop. So you initialize a variable at uh, zero. You say, I want to increment this variable un while it is still less than the length of the array and you want to increase uh, that variable, increment it by one each time. And so what we'll do in here, just to kind of show this, is to print out, to log out, the names, uh, the specific name, and the way you get that is by passing in i as the index, and then using uh, the array names, obviously, as the array that we're dealing with. So this should go ahead and print out all of the items in the array. Now there's also uh, a pretty cool way to do this, also that's a little bit shorter, is to say names, dot for each and this might be a little bit a uh, little bit weird of a syntax for you but this is uh, basically going to take a callback function and this callback function inside of this callback function will determine what we want to do with each name so what we're going to do is use a little little quick syntax here to do this and i'll explain this in a second so what this is saying is the for each is going to iterate through each element of that array then we're going to define this callback. So this is actually a function here that we're defining uh, with a little bit of fat arrow syntax. If you want to look into ES6 fat arrows, uh, fat arrow functions, uh, you can do that for a little bit of background. But basically what this is saying is this function is going to take in the name and then it's going to go ahead and log out the name directly. So obviously this is a little bit quicker, easier than the for loop above. So I can run this and it'll do the same type thing. So that's pretty cool as well. I uh, recommend looking at the for each to see if it kind of fits what you're trying to do. A lot of times it gives you a little bit simpler of a syntax for you to work with, which is uh, pretty nice. Some other things that we can uh, do, uh, a couple of extra array functions I want to talk about. One is the map function. And what this does is let's say we have a numbers array of zero, one, two, three, four, five. So we have an array of numbers. Let's say we wanted to change that array to increment, increment each value by one. Uh, well, there's something called the map function for arrays. And what map does, it allows you to visit each element of the array and transform that array in some way based on how what you tell it to do with that element. So this is gonna be a little bit similar to the, the names for each up above. We'll do a names.map. And uh, for each of these, we'll call it uh, name. And what we're gonna say is the, what we want, Basically, we're trying to trying to tell uh, the map function how we want to change each name. And actually, this is not names anymore. We're working with nums. All right, so we'll take nums for each of those for each of these called num each individual number. We want to increment that number by one. So what this is going to do is it's going to take for each number. It's going to change that number in some way, whatever whatever we define in here. Again, you probably want to look at the ES6 fat arrow syntax for functions if this is a little bit confusing, but this is going to go ahead and let us transform each number in that array to do something. So I could uh, change this by five, increment it by five. I could do a divide by two if I wanted to do that. Whatever it is that you define over here is what's going to happen. I could actually add maybe a string to it and have it be really odd. Probably not something you want to do, but you could. So what the map function allows you to do is to iterate through each element in your array and actually uh, update that element in some way. Now you might've noticed if I were to uh, print out nums again, 
nums hasn't changed. So what the map function does, it actually returns a new array from uh, whatever thing you did. So if we did uh, nums divided by two, I could assign this to a nums uh, d2 or something variable. And if I then print out nums d2, now you can see that is the thing that actually has the changes take it, taking place. So that map function will return a new array uh, that basically allowed you to change each element in the original one and create a new array from it. There is one more I want to cover. Uh, let's say uh, let's say we wanted to sum up all the numbers in an array. Well, there is a reduce function. So let's take our nums again. Let's call reduce. What reduce will do is allow us to allow us to convert all the elements into array into basically one response. So the, the most obvious uh, example of this is to take every element of the array and sum them up. So what happens is, uh, in this case, the you're gonna have two parameters for this function. You'll have a, uh, in this case, I'll call it total. This is the accumulator is what it's typically called. And then you'll have the actual num that we're working with. And then we'll do our arrow here. And then whatever we say uh, after this is how we update that total. So what we're gonna do is say total plus equals num. And this whole thing, this is probably a little confusing for people who don't have ES6 uh, fat arrow function background, but go look it up. Uh, this whole thing is our callback function. That's the first parameter that reduce takes. The second parameter is uh, what your accumulator will start at. So in this case, the accumulator is gonna start at zero. It will be referenced by this name total here. For each num that we see, we're gonna add the value of num to the total that we've already got. So if we uh, go ahead and run this, see am I missing? Oh, it looks like I've got an extra parentheses there. And I've got a little typo here where I don't wanna add the value of nums, the actual ray to our total, we just want to add the value of the individual num. And I think that thing was still auto-correcting me. Now if I finally fix that to just num, now we get the 15. Kind of stumbled on that for a second. So reduce is uh, where you're basically trying to get like one, one thing out of an array of things. The most simple example is you've got an array of numbers, you want to sum them up, and you want to return that sum. So that's what, that's what you can do with reduce, which is pretty cool. There are uh, a couple of different ways to make copies of arrays. Uh, one of the most um, most recent additions is to use the spread operator. So what this uh, what this does? Let's do the uh, let's take the nums and make a copy of that. So what what the spread operator does is allows you to use these three dots here, and what this is saying is it's going to take every element of the nums array and it's just going to put it inside of this array that's defined here. So if we uh, print out copy nums, uh, that's that's uh, obviously a copy there. And then you could do a copy of names the same way using the spread operator like that. And then we could print that out just to be sure. And there's all of our names. One older way, slightly older way, is let's call this another clone, or yeah, another clone is fine. Uh, we could take our nums array and we could call slice. And what slice does is it will remove something from the array and then uh, return a copy of what's left. So if you don't take anything out of the array, you can actually make a copy of the array by using slice and get something like that. So that's a couple of different ways to, uh, to make copies of arrays. There's lots of functions built into arrays for some fancy things that you can do. The map and reduce are two pretty cool functions. There's also uh, sort. You can, actually you can actually define how things should be sorted once you get into more complicated uh, objects maybe being stored inside your array. So there's some, there's some other really cool functions, but this is a pretty good intro into what JavaScript arrays are, how you work with them, the things you can do, and in general, it's an ordered list of whatever kind of items you wanna store. It could be strings, it could be numbers, it could be objects, it could be Booleans, it could actually be a combination of all of those things, whatever it is that you need to store. So that is your intro to JavaScript arrays. I'm curious, for people that are new to arrays or new to JavaScript, what do you guys think? Are arrays confusing for you? Did this help? Let me know in the comments below. I want to thank you guys for checking out the video and I will see you in the next one. 
Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out learnbuildteach.com to sign up for the newsletter to learn about my latest content. Thanks for watching.